first 100K, I had like a fire in me. I just wasn't satisfied. I wanted to go further and see what that was like. I'd had friends that were doing um, 200 miles and 240K, and Milo was the next on the list. When I first told mom I was doing my first half marathon, she's like, oh, I don't know, like, be careful. Like, you and now I'm like, Eight times that. <laughs> 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 maps me, please. I'll go right. The local. The goodies. It's like generally the best part of running. It is the best part. They can just eat junk food. <laughs> Why do you run? So I have something to do for the day. <laughs> I just love it. It's too fun. Now good, Laura. You know it's a video, That's right? That's a video. <laughs> just doing one pair of shoes. Nah, I've changing. Got those ones behind you as well. Are you gonna change? Um, if they get wet, I definitely will. Um, but I intend to use those for my flat. Section. This is just for Jamie to have with him. Put some toe socks on. No, I just don't think I know. <laughs> <laughs> the immediate like, uh-uh. Like those between my little tootsies. You don't know, it's like a though. wedgie. A wedgie between my toes. I can't do that. Oh. I am definitely nervous now that we're creeping up on the time. Um, but I feel good. It's just gotta get out there and start going. <laughs> yeah. I've put four very solid months <laughs> behind this. And I'm doing this with dad. I make myself cry. Yeah, I didn't plan this race to be for my dad, but as soon as the news hit, I'm like, this this is for my dad, this is for my family as well my kind of tribute to dad in a way even though he didn't fully understand what i was doing but he was a hard-working man and i guess that's how i translate my hard work is going to go into my running and my hope is that dad saw me over those 31 hours and was like that's that's my hard-working daughter there's nothing easy about competing or running or doing any of these races or setting challenges like there's a reason it's called a challenge in the first place it's hard to obtain um, I woke up at 3 50 because we had to leave by 4 30 so I gave myself the extra 10 minutes to get ready first thing I did was eat so that food would settle in my stomach um, race day food was crumpets with biscoff and jam because bit of sugar bit of carbs um, and something that I just enjoy and know sits in my stomach right. <laughs> Crew is on. <laughs> Let's go. On the way there, there was a like a one way road because of construction happening and it took forever to get through this section and I'm sitting here like, I'm gonna miss the gun. This is stressing me out. Not what I need before the race. I bloody bump into Lo Lucy Bartholomew and um, she's just like, oh yeah, the 100 mile is already gone. I'm like, you're shitting me. Anyway, run to the thing and I'm like, oh, there's a lot of green bibs, which is the miler bib. And yeah, I was good to go. They hadn't actually started yet. So I had made it, they pushed the time back because they knew there were the um, road works happening and um, yeah started the race we're here we're at the start line i have just trained four months i have been running for three years and i'm about to do my first mile it was like so overwhelming um and i'm like looking up at the sky thinking about my dad and i'm like this race is gonna be for you dad i love trail running because of being outside like the nature seeing such incredibly different landscapes than being like growing up in the city, just being out there, it was like 40 to 50K winds and I was blowing around, but that just made it so much more beautiful.
Pretty much after that point, it continued to be super beautiful. The weather took a turn. I really wish it didn't rain on this race. I think that would have improved my mood a lot. There's a section that's mandatory to walk on, but there's also multiple of that same um, metal grate in different sections of the course. I still ran on it because you're allowed to, and I just, I'm not sure if I tripped over my poles or I tripped over myself. Either way, I cut myself up a little bit, um, have a few cuts on my legs. I let out a big yell when I was out there. Yeah, it just put me in a bit of a, God damn it, like now I've got to deal with this at the next checkpoint because you can't just not tend to that. I really didn't feel like getting an infection. The first thing I thought was, oh, this is not going to be the five minute checkpoint I want it to be. I was saturated. I didn't put my raincoat on because I had hopes that the rain would stop. Um, but it didn't and I was already saturated. So I was just like, we're just going to get to the checkpoint and change. Changing takes a long time, bandaging and flushing out my wounds. And then there was a huge blister on the back of my right foot. It had me just thinking, cool, my like goal time is just slipping further and further away. <laughs> Legs are actually okay. My toes were hurting a lot at the start, but just because they were cold. Yeah, so the downhill. I'm feeling okay now, but that's partly why I'm not eating. Maybe switch out the electrolyte. I've probably had plenty. I've got 18 k's off in this. I know. 16. Six, no. 16. Doesn't she come in at 88? She comes in after this one, right? No? Yeah, after the shot, yeah. Yep, so you've got 16.4 uh, <laughs> Ks and she's coming with you. Vanessa, have less sugar. <laughs> that thing was the shit with my blister. Good? Yeah, Can't feel it? It's a little wet in there. Good. Yeah. It's right, not your legs though. <laughs> we'll see you in no time. <laughs> oh. 16k loop loops are annoying though because you're just going back one like you're going up one way and then coming back again the same way you're like i'm seeing all the same shit i'm going back to a checkpoint that i've already been to out and backs are just not mentally fun i'm better yeah you're looking good hey. being strong i made a friend along the way so that made oh. Dave here, so I'm not here for the crewing for you guys, like it's too much. We've been playing you, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad they're the card game. <laughs> okay. Let's do this, let's hike this stupid hill. Alright, bye guys. Bye. See you the next one! We're walking up this hill, thankfully put our raincoats on this time and it just rapidly starts pissing down, like pelting your skin hurts. Um, and there was, yeah, this huge crack of thunder. And that's when I screamed. And um, uh, yeah, we, we just kept plugging along. And then a volunteer guy who was like parked out front of where we would normally turn left into the trails, he was just like, Look guys, I normally wouldn't be telling people to get in my car, but the lightning risk right now is like very high. So if you want to take care of yourself, you can sit in my car for just like five to 10 minutes. I was very much tired. I was like miserable, but at that point I don't think I was too nasty. Like I was just like, I'm just sad at the moment and wet and cold and just like, completely out of my comfort. This was a great example of my delirium. She, I forgot where she said I had to go, to, where I could go to change. And I'm like, hey guys, where's the first aid lady? And um, everyone's just like, she's like right there. And I'm like, where, where guys? I don't see her, but she's like in a bright yellow visor with a thing that says first aid. And this woman is right in front of me. And I'm like, where though? Anyway, 
good job, Vanessa. We found her and she told me where to go. I was pretty grateful that like, I, I had someone that was guaranteed to be there with me. She was fresh. Cassie was so switched on and considering the fact that she technically wasn't totally fresh because she was crewing, um, she did, I kept saying to her, maybe I was a bit delirious, I just kept saying thank you so much over and over again. Hello guys, I'm about to run. You can't see much but my, up my nose. She's 88 Ks in, but it's just downhill and flat. Yes. Oh, that's cold. So right, we'll warm up. Please. I haven't actually clipped in my... I'm like, why is it so loose? Living the vida loca. Thanks. It sucked knowing that I wasn't see gonna see you guys for quite a while. Um, mentally dealing with that is no fun. It's, it got so much worse on the way back, but we'll get there. Running in the night is hard because you can't see enough to actually make it feel like you're making distance. So more a mental challenge once again to be like motivated or uplifted enough to be like, cool, great, everything is okay. Like we're moving. I wasn't angry. I was just absolutely like so sad. I had broken down into tears um, in almost like disbelief in the fact that I still had so much longer to go. I, I just looked at Doug and I'm like, Doug, you just have one goal and it's get me to that finish line. That's it, that's all I want. When I told you not to film, it was like, I cannot handle a camera in my face right now. Um, and I know I said to film all the good and the bad, but it's, it was like, you're gonna make me really angry and I might like smack your camera. Like, it was not, a, I was very angry. <laughs> oh, I, so bad. I think we spent like maybe 20 minutes at that spot and carried on. My stomach was still very painful um, and so because I knew I was so close to the finish I basically stopped eating. It had gotten so hot and I was just roasting and there was not that much like tree coverage over these final 10 k's or the k's before that. I was so energetically, emotionally, physically exhausted. Doug was doing his best to like lift me up. He's like, you've gone so far. This is the furthest you've gone. You're doing, you're moving really well. You should be so proud of yourself. I felt nothing. Yeah, crossing that line, seeing the time, seeing my friends, hearing my friends. I'm like, it's done. I've done it. <laughs> So it was purely just like the race is over. I didn't feel it until the night that I had gotten home. I like had a good cry about it. If you do things properly, if you train, if you recover, if you're eating properly, what you're doing is you're making the hard less hard you're not making something easier because that would that would be saying something's easy to begin with but it's not take your time especially if you're much younger if you're early 20s to late 20s even in your 30s like there's no rush if you're just doing it for fun and to push yourself do it the right way so that you can keep doing it long term and enjoy the full process